Hello and welcome back to episode four of The Acolyte. This episode is called Day, and Andre and I are going to dissect this thing like nobody's business. So let's let's get to it, Andre. Um, okay. Any any thoughts going into this? Well, I will have to say, for me, I was very optimistic coming into this based on last week's episode. Right. You know, I mean, I'm like, okay, all right, we're 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 dealing with witches. So, so what's next? Obviously, you were just like, okay, what's next? How much more are we going to get? So this episode begins with the planet Kofar, and we've got the Wookiee Jedi, Kel Naka. And he's walking through. You, you basically kind of see what his day-to-day -day life is like. He goes out, grabs some berries or twigs, and comes back home. He's wearing his his lightsaber and his robe. Looks like he's living in a crashed ship, which when you get inside, it's kind of cool because I I like the fact that like there's like a little walkway bridge, but the but the center of it's open and so it's raining outside and the water's coming in from outside. So I mean, it seems like I'm like okay, that seems like a good place to live, but you can see all over the place where these the the that the, the circle that that may has on her head that represent i guess the witches it's everywhere it's it's like he's obsessed with that and then there's also uh yin yang symbol in there as well so it's like he's struggling he's obsessed with whatever happened but he's also struggling with balance i guess I mean, so, but he's there doing his thing, which also just makes you go, know, what happened 16 years ago that, that it just affected all these Jedi to where the only one who, well, I guess, um, the only one who's, well, the, the other two Jedi, Carrie Ann Moss, uh, what, we, I, we really got to remember what her Jedi name is. Yeah, that's and, bad. I'm going to have to write it down. Yeah, I, I meant to and I forgot. Um, and uh, Soul are the only ones that are kind of just still doing their regular Jedi thing. Yeah. So that that that's where we're going. Okay. Uh, next scene, we've got We've got Jedi, older Jedi, Padawans, I'm assuming, in lightsaber training, but they're using the the, the wooden sticks. And I got to say, I think we touched on this a little bit before. Those Jedi robes are ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's the colors. It, yeah, I don't know why that particular color palette was chosen. But yeah, I think it's the orange, like the mustard orange color. That I, is really killing it. I think that I know that what they're trying to make sure that we are under the we know that they're in a different era. It's just it it's just not working for me. But I was oops. imagining a young uh, Wookiee in that training class. Like that's the only alien race that wasn't in the class. I just it was nice to see that there was a, a Jedi Wookiee on the team from the four Jedi 16 years ago, but I just thought it would be interesting to, I, I, I haven't read enough comics to see a, a, a lightsaber wielding a Wookiee, so I just thought that would have been kind of cool to, the class was interesting, but um, in a way, uh, I don't know. I knew at the end of the, the their little, um, I don't know what you call it, routine, that he would have two students stay behind and, you know, oh, you need to work on your form. I could just, I don't know why I've seen that cliche before, um, but you were going to, you're about to say OSHA uh, and continue on with the. Uh, yeah. So OSHA, OSHA was there to tell Jackie goodbye. And yes. I, I really, I really do like Jackie. She is. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you could, you could tell she, she knows what she's doing with, with, the uh with the whatever the weapon was that they were practicing with and she's just such a grounded character i really yes. really like that character very well written yes 
but she's talking to to Osha and and saying, "Well, you're not going to stay." And she's like, "The thing that got me was Osha says, May is May is a, the Jedi's problem now, despite the fact that that's her sister, despite the fact that she thought she was dead all this time, she's just going to walk away." And I'm really struggling with liking Osha as a character right now. <laughs> yeah, she kind of did that cliche, you know, I got to get out of here before, you know, I've become more of a burden cliche thing. And yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I didn't see that coming, but when it happens, it's, it is kind of like, a, oh, okay, we're going to do, right. we're going to do this. Well, I mean, we'll go your she, way out. Well, she, she even goes, I, I've caused a uh, soul so much problems already and like no not really okay well not that we know of <laughs> right but i just in her, at least in her mind she has so yeah. uh, i also forgot to mention i don't know if it was this episode or the previous one but the uh use of the hyperdrive rings i really love that yeah. uh, are the light speed rings man those are so cool I, it was nice to see that they're using that regularly um, in this, you know, just I love the break off, you know, from yeah. the, you know, they just they just jump out and then phew, it's really cool. They did a good job with at least two scenes. I remember them using over. The, I don't like I said, I don't know if it was the last one or this one in particular, but yeah, just a really nice, nice transition. The, uh, just the 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 uh, hyperspace tunnel or the actual ring that they use to go to, through hyperspace, the ring. That that's attached to the vehicle. Yeah, there's at least yes, two shots that yeah where it just broke off from that and they they'd fly to the planet. So so and okay so that that is definitely a point at which there is a difference between what we have now you know in the current timeline compared to to back then. That was done well. Why they can't get the general robes right? I don't know. But I didn't know um, Tie Fighters can't do hyperdrive oh. which i could have sworn there were scenes where they were around the star destroyer so maybe there's some kind of proximity based mm. uh, yeah. oh As okay. matter of fact um i think it was in, in the clone wars in the, the earlier days what they would do was they would they would have like a cruiser or whatever and the tie fighters were attached to the bottom they were, no, they were okay yeah and so they would go through hyperspace and then once they got where they were going they would drop the ships and, and go out that way yeah um, yeah the, the tie fighter pilots are hard, are hardcore or cannon fodder whichever way you want to look at it because they've got no shields yeah <laughs> got no hyperspace you're just you're just Either you're good or you die. It, there's, right. just, there's, and you know, they they just overwhelm. It's overwhelming numbers, just like with stormtroopers. It's just overwhelming no, numbers. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I do like the idea of the hyperspace ring. It it definitely, they're doing that right. I will give them that 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 much. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I, the spaceship design, the design of the ship that they're using kind of reminds me of i guess the color palette looks a little ultra ultramanish the like with the silver and the red yeah. um, i don't know why that it just does but we'll well we'll get there but it's a decent it's an odd design i really liked ahsoka ship that was really oh, cool absolutely looking. that oh that's a you talk about knocked it out of the park. Oh. Yeah, and she did a lot of uh, uh, on in on the spot takeoffs. So they it kind of seems like they designed that ship to help with that. I would say the Bad Batch does it to some degree, but that has more to do with they just know that ship really well and they they know what to do with it. But anyway, not to get way too okay, off subject. <laughs> well. This kind of falls into my sci-fi checking the boxes. And usually when I watch any kind of sci-fi, yeah, I look at the technology. What kind of ships do they have? What kind of weapons do they have? You know, and, and if, if you can sell me on the technology, the weapons, and the you got a cool ship, okay, I'm I'm in. <laughs> so we get to 
So all this happens, those two scenes happen before the opening of of the episode. What I do like, I think they've learned their lesson. These long intros don't work. So just just a real short intro, you know, with the logo and let's start the story. So yeah. I, I do appreciate that. I think Ahsoka did that too. Yeah, I well, I think the 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 shortest and the best that was the first time I I noticed it was the Bad Batch, because it was just like it just like like the the singers the, oh and they had right. the, and then the drums and then you're in the episode. I'm just like okay, let's watch some stuff. It does Wars. a recap though, right? If I I remember. Yes, yes, the, yeah, it does do the recap. Um, yeah. So when we come back, the first scene back was the the Jedi in Council. And I think we jumped the gun a couple of episodes ago because we were talking about the scene. And I guess we'd both seen it before because we were talking about the, the uh, they're arguing about, well, who trained Bay, you know, and they said something like, um, could it be? And they mentioned someone or worse. And. I, I'm assuming the or worse would be a nod to the Sith, but they at this point I thought they mentioned the witches, but they but no mention of the witches has been said so far. I'm sure so, they believe they well that goes back from my theory from the last episode about they obliterated that particular tribe of the witches, so or coven. So, coming, yeah. you know, they, you know, I don't know. They probably believe they're not even worthy of worrying about. That's in my theory. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, it just kind of lends to the arrogance of the, the, the Jedi. And this is kind of what we're getting in this particular scene. Because, you know, the Jedi there are discussing, you know, and then he, he in strolls, Master Vernestra, and she's kind of got an attitude, and she's saying, well, because she makes the comment uh, that, well, she was trained by a Jedi, and well, I, even I can see that from a video. I'm just like, that's a huge assumption. Uh, but I think that's a, that was kind of their attempt to walk us down a particular path. Uh, but I just... So she she makes the call, get uh, Kelnaka back, and we're going to send somebody to intercept May, and and we need to squash this because this is where they were talking about we can't report this to the High Council because then they'll have to report it to the Senate, and the scandal will be blah 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 blah. So this is where they're trying to handle it internally. But as they break up the meeting, you know they they're going out and and. Soul stops Vernestra and was like, hey, uh, well, I need to go. Let me be the one to bring her in. And she kind of dresses him down like, well, why didn't you tell me that she had a sister? You know, well, no, she said, why didn't you tell me about this? And he's like, oh, I told you as soon as I know. But she's just like, no, 16 years ago. Why didn't you tell me there was a chance that there was even that, that there was a sister out there? Yeah. I'm like, well, she How fell down a bottomless hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one could have survived that. In there was probably fluff in terms of dialogue. They just needed to increase the tension a little bit, or I'm not really sure, but it didn't, yeah, I, it didn't hit the ear right for sure. Well, I'm just, I'm just really not liking that character at all. She's just, I, and the no. sad thing is, I'm, I'm, actually listening to the most recent uh, Star Wars novel and it's called uh, well I can't remember what it's called I'll put a picture of it right here <laughs> and Vernestra is in it and she's a great character and they're just doing her wrong it's just I have to watch some videos on it yeah uh, I'll yeah um just the whole line is they they're, they're just getting this character wrong so but basically, Soul talks Vernistra into letting them go get get letting him be on the team. But they have to go get Bay. They have to. I mean, they have to go get Osha in order to do it. So he runs off and catches her before she takes off to wherever. 
and convinces conveniently because yeah, you know, like she left two scenes ago to, to keep this from happening. Well, she had to get uh, uh, her uh, a pip all redone. Oh right. <laughs> but he catch, he catches her and just like she's she's telling you know I I, I don't want to I don't want to do this but I'll go but I. I won't wear the Jedi civilian robes. And the next thing she's sitting in Jedi civilian robes. I'm like, okay, yeah. Why is this even necessary? Why? I why guess they, that? that you know, is that a good Star Wars joke? Is that a? I'm not really sure. No, this is the <laughs> first time ever ever heard of civilian robes. I, yeah, I think I it was understand. supposed to like, be a joke, and it just didn't. It, again, it didn't land. Yeah, why can't she just wear her normal clothes? Like we need to be able to pick her out from. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, the person she's we're with actually us, yeah. after. Yeah. So okay. I don't know. Maybe it's a yord thing. <laughs> you yorded it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and then and then Yord is on the ship and well, okay. So they're on the way to Kofar. In the meantime, um May and I think his name is Keimer. They already land on the planet. He knows where where uh, Kel Naka is, and so it's just it just seems that the the planet just seems really really wild. Just and the trees just look huge, like like thousands of feet tall or whatever. And here, this bumbling, stumbling guy, her handler, is the one that knew knows where the the this Jedi is He's like, well, I found him. It was kind of difficult and, and don't go off out there because even bounty hunters won't go in there. And, and so I'm just like, and, and she even calls him all age. I'm like, bounty hunters won't, won't go in there, but you did. Right. As you owe him. I'm just like, what is, what is this guy's thing? And it's like, he's picking at her the whole time. Well, you know, how are you going to kill the Jedi? Cause you have to kill him without a weapon. And you know, he just keeps antagonizing her. And I'm thinking, are you, you're working for that guy, you know? Yeah. He, just, I thought like, he was just there to help. A little. Yeah. You're doing, yeah, you're doing way too much. Um, but they get down, you know, they, they said it's a three hour walk. Let's get going. So they head towards the, to well, didn't the, he say it, that he owed him too? Yeah, he did. Um, and she didn't press. She she's just like, well, well, what do you owe him? And he kind of deflected, because he even brings up the fact that you know, uh, be, just because your sister's alive and that doesn't change anything, you still have to do this, you know. So every time he's just like avoiding the question. But ironically, this is the point where I'm actually starting to like May. Because now it's like yeah. Matt is starting to think for herself. Yeah. And she's and she's going, something's not right here. <laughs> you know, and and the thing that I lo- love about I guess what I didn't like about her as a little girl was she was letting her relationship with her sister blind her to whatever. But that same relationship, that same characteristic is what's making her a strong character now. Right. You no, know, I mean she's she's like, okay, my sister's alive. I gotta go get her. I gotta I mean once they get into the woods, she says so much, it's just like, look, my sister's alive. I'll just turn myself in to uh to Kelnaka. I don't need well, I guess she said she did need him to get there, but um he, he was good, willing to run headlong into the forest and you know, she was gonna go fight a Wookiee all tired. I mean Right. So she Maybe she was going to try and reason with it because uh, it still has the Jedi ways. Yeah, no, she, but her whole plan was to, to kill him. I think I was thinking about that when they first arrived, like, I don't know if this is going to go in your favor. Like after the first two guys, which were obviously really easy to be, you know, I mean, he literally just pulled force, pulled the the weapon and broke it. So, I mean, I didn't know how she was going to pull that off. Maybe like an explosion or which would still be a weapon. So I don't know, like maybe you, I mean, what counts do you, 
um, make the Wookiee fall off a cliff by a mistake, <laughs> or maybe you just so happen to make a giant rock fall on it through chance, or I don't know. Like, what are, what you are the what? circumstances that actually lead to killing a Jedi without a weapon? Is it environmental, splash damage kind of thing? Well, you you got to kind of wonder. Well, why did the master want that in particular? I mean, yeah, that's kind of odd. Uh, killing a Jedi is no easy feat to begin with, and then to do it without a weapon. I mean, that's I, uh, it's I almost like he wants. How far can we put our theories into this? It's. I feel like it's one of the moms, and like behind this. It's got to be one of the moms. As okay, the bad guy. I, I I agree. I agree. We are behind a lot of. I mean, everyone else. But I will say, and I I didn't get to mention this earlier. I've been trying to avoid as many spoilers as possible. Um, and I think even Michaela was watching something, and we had to back off um, because I hadn't seen the next episode. I mean, there was a possibility there was something in there, so that is a pretty big deal. But either way, just trying to. You know, I like I said, that's why I'm trying to be sure not to jump too far ahead if, you know, depending on how we're trying to pace it. But I will say that as far as the show goes, um, at episode four, it, I, I'm getting the same feeling that I did from The Mandalorian, uh, both, or is it all three seasons? Mm-hmm. Um, where by the time you get to episode four, it should pace into something different so you usually should spend like the first three kind of annoyed and then it should pick up and i'm thinking that this show despite the controversy that a lot of people have on behalf of how it's been written or what's going on i do think that it is kind of shifting gears into a, a solid story um and it might not be the best story or right, you know, right. whatever we're expecting but it is interesting to see I guess the universe from this time perspective, different perspective, but see, okay. So, and, and I will agree with that. And lap, last episode is the one that made me kind of turn. That's the one like, okay, this is something different. Oh, so that's, that's why I was excited for this episode. Um, so which not to jump too far ahead, but you think it's one of the mothers. I think it's one of the mothers as well. Which one? I'm um, the the black mom. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. 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 No. Well, I okay. mean, I think it's the. Oh my god! If if it is the um the other mom, which what what is their race called? The Zerac. Right. Yeah. The, that the, would yeah. because she did have a lot more um of a serious angry uh, well not angry but a very uh protective. Stance yeah, on active and aggressive. Yep. Yeah, that's good. I didn't think about that. I mean, I was just thinking the 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 first mom just because of I don't know some kind of vengeance, you know, my daughter's yeah. kind of thing. But but she was willing to let her go, and and one of them, one yeah, of them go. Yeah. yeah. I still think. I still think. If if something comes out, well, okay. I the one of the theories that you came out last episode, you were talking about the maybe the Republic had sent somebody s sent a cruiser down, and that was what the explosion was that killed all the the, yes. the rest of the coven. <clears throat> yeah, orbital, orbital, uh, orbital strike bombard bombardment. Yeah. So I hadn't considered that. I still kind of feel like it's a deception. I think they they kind of fake their death so they could go hide. Be and that's only based on the mother saying, um, if you go with the Jedi, you will never see us again. Because that means, I mean, if she did, she could always come back there if they stay there. But mm. I just thought that meant like the Jedi are always doing something. So it's not likely that. But now, yeah, that was a, a perspective I didn't think of, but that does make a lot of sense and kind of feeds into my theory of them knowing that they are going to be destroyed. Right. Well, I, I, figured, I just don't think, well, I just don't think they're running from the Jedi. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't think they're, I think they're hiding from the Jedi. I mean, that's I mean, what I just they thought had they were hiding from point. everyone. Well, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, 
Okay. So we're going to put a pin in that because that kind of comes into play later in the, so we get, they have this tracker who's also wearing the civilian robes, looks like a, a badger or something, whatever. And yeah, they have sure. be, yeah, I'm just like, that's, uh, they give him the sentence, and send him off once they get on the planet. Now, Yord had a moment with May, uh, with Osha. Oh, right. Stop doing that. And, and he was, um, uh, Osha was saying, look, if it comes to it, you have to take her out and you can't hesitate. This isn't, I, I'm not strong enough to do it. You got to do it. And he, he says to her, just like, well, Master Soul brought you for a reason. And maybe this is as much for her, for us to catch her, as for you to confront some of your demons. I guess he even says, you know, I've known you since we were younglings and you know, this has always been your 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 downfall, and and that kind of goes back to uh, when she was having the conversation with Jackie, and she was saying how, well, you know, I wasn't, oh, maybe she said it on the planet uh, she, about being the perfect Jedi or being a, uh, I wasn't a good Jedi because I could never, uh, I could never give up my past or something like that. Uh, so. Yord's response to her was just was was really good, right? And as they were going to the forest, and when she's talking to Jackie, Jack, uh, Jackie kind of says the same thing. You know, she she's telling her, um, "We aren't defined by what we've lost. We're defined by what we survive." And I'm like, "And this kid is just a Padawan?" <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Oh, and I just that's what that's what solidified it for me as far as her character development. Uh, either what she experienced prior versus what we're seeing. Yeah, she's she's very well rounded. Um, there was another part that you forgot to ma to mention that happened prior about when Yord was getting on Osha about the weapon situation. He was like trying oh. to ask for it back, and then. And it, you know, and they just kind of trailed off for that conversation. I think I can't remember what happened, but something took place behind them and they got distracted and it just wasn't brought up again. But just like he's just standing on it, like, dude, she's not a civilian at this point. Like, well, she is, well, she is a civilian, but she still has, you know, like, you're not the only one there to protect her. It's just right. kind of like a little annoying at this point. Like, you know, she's not no longer a, uh, a uh, prisoner. So, right, like, right. what are you trying to do? I just don't. I didn't really like that. Um, but uh, in between those scenes, there was also a beautiful pan shot where they were walking along this. Uh, it's kind oh, of like the, a the, the ridge line. Ridge line. Oh man, I love that kind of stuff. Like that's the kind of stuff that gives it that Star Wars feel, and you know that they. I'm. It's possible that they went on location. I mean, at this point, you can do a lot oh, of ab oh, different things. No. But I mean, like, for that. With, I with the it. studio that they have, I mean, it's possible they just walked along a path and then just digitally... I don't know. I, I would like to believe that that's what they did. Because, I, I mean, uh, we just watched the ILM thing uh, today because uh, I was showing Michaela about how the practical effects were done with the Star Wars franchise after the whole Jim Hansen uh, right. uh, documentary. So I just wanted to throw that in there like this. This is how they did that. And, but anyway, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, it's a good, it's, it's a good angle. Really I, good. You know, I feel like, you know, going on location now that they have the volume and they can do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trying to, I think I can tell the difference between the shots when they're on location and when they're at the volume. Yeah, uh, but and that I'm just like the angle it was at. It just it it just sells itself better that they were were on location there. So and I think I feel like that's a new Star Wars thing that that's like this era Star Wars stuff. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like my. I mean, I well, mean we didn't have a choice but to go on location back then. Yeah, I'm about to. Yeah, place, but you're right. But the way they're doing it now, it, it's got its own feel. And I, 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 I do, I like the way it feels. It, it, it does feel good. So we get into the, the forest a little bit. Um, so let's get back to, uh, okay, they're, they're in the, the forest. Osha and Keimer are already in the forest. 
and I did it again. May and Kymer are already in the forest, and the Jedi are walking. You know, they're and they're they're a pretty good group of Jedi. And I, I have to say, as they're walking into the the forest, I'm just like, what is a Jedi? What is the Star Wars version of a red shirt? Because there are way too many Jedi. You 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 know what the reference of the red shirt is for Star Trek? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So there are way too many Jedi here, and they're not all going to survive. <laughs> There's just not. There's just no way. But uh, as they're walking into the forest, you know, they're just like they feel it's they can smell rot. It just feels. It just kind of feels off and. And uh, Oshi even says to to a soul, just like, what's up? And just like, it's nothing. But, you know, he, he senses something. And I'm sorry. You're in this unknown forest or whatever. Don't touch anything. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't like that. That's you didn't sense number anything. One. You, you, you disturbed that creature. Right. That well, weird roly poly with wings, but okay. But that's what sparked the conversation between her and Jackie because she touched it, it woke up, yeah. and Soul had to kill it. And so now she's walking around feeling sad. And you know, I caused something's death that I caused something's death, and that was you know, we get a little bit peek into her her past, and that's where where, where Jackie was, was saying, you know, we're defined by what we survive. Um, so May decides that she's going to turn herself in to kill Naka and she's okay with, with sitting in a jail and, and answering for her crimes as long as she can have her sister. That's all she cares about. I'm like, okay. And so she, she sets a trap for Kyra. He's hanging upside down. She goes and runs to to uh, Kelnaka's cabin. And as she's on her way there, she falls into this little thing and the tracker sees her and he starts squealing or whatever. So now the Jedi know where they are. So so they go running to Kelnaka's cabin because they didn't know where it was at this point. She just said, I got to get in here and turn myself in before they get here because if I don't, then, you know, they may take me out. And I should have known that there was something wrong because she walks in there and Kelnak is kind of slumped over. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, man. So, you know, she walks and she, she's like, hey. And she walks around him and he's got a slash across his, a very freshly cut slash. It's still smoking. So here's my problem with this. One, Kelnaka is still a Jedi. There are more Jedi on this planet than there have been for a long time. He doesn't get up. He doesn't seek them out. Nothing. I mean, that's that's my first problem. Two, how did whoever came and killed him sneak up on him? He was yeah. Wearing his, I mean, he's wearing his lightsaber. I'm like, but what are we doing here? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll see a flashback to that scene somehow. I hope. Um, but if they move past that without any context, then it'll just be a, oh, we couldn't think of anything. So we just said he died. Like, you know, <laughs> just that's just sad. That's just, and he's a Wookiee. You yeah. Wanna, oh my God. Yeah. There's a lot of, see, that's the thing. They are, if, that does go the route where they don't explain it away, then they're just kind of appealing to the fan base who are just like, oh, you know, like anybody can get got in this universe. You know, uh, not I don't want to say a true fan, but anyone who's right, been right. watching for a while would know, okay, this would probably be a lot harder than, you know, than one would think. And you add the Jedi powers into it as well. It's like, okay, that's a scary Wookiee to go up against, right. one would think. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure in our minds, we would we were expecting some kind of um, interaction, albeit right. brief. Um, but, you know, at least a couple of bumps on the head. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> throwing around. Um, but, yeah, which we'll get to that in a minute when, as we go, go on here, and, you know. But, yeah. So, all right, so she's inside, 
she goes, okay, he's here. Okay. She's peeking outside because all the Jedi finally show up. And I think this scene was done well because you see Osha standing there and it's a front shot of her. And then you see just this black figure behind her. Yeah, and that was a good, like, entrance. Oh, yeah, man, I was really did, pleased with that. They did really, really well. Yeah. So she, she you know, she I guess she senses him. She feels him. So she turns around and he's like, walks right up to her. And he's just like right in her face. And so this is where I'm looking at the body structure. And I'm just like, that is a very lithe body. And I'm going... It's got to be one of the mothers. It's got to be. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, because just... the mask is kind of, mm, I don't know. Do we, I mean, for this particular, who oh, is it kind of scenario, it makes sense, but I don't know. I, I don't, I think the helmet mask is just kind of ugly. Oh, in, oh I agree. Design. Well, yeah. so I, I can, I, I can get the difficulty in design in so much as you don't want to make it look like Darth Vader. You don't want to make it look like um, Kylo Ren. Uh, yeah, Kylo Ren. You don't want to make it look like Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's so many things. So it's got to be, it's got to be out there. But what the what I didn't like about it is the like the smile. The it just like right where the mouth was. It just kind of came up and it looked kind of like a. I I almost want to say um, like the Joker who laugh the Batman who laughs or something oh, like yeah, that. yeah. along that lines. I'm just like, and maybe they'll explain it, but um, I just think it's like a the cultural war helmet of their, which kind of goes into uh, the you saying that it was the other mom. I do now. I mean that might be a part of. But I bet if we look something up, we'll, we'll probably find that. Unless that helmet was just a, a canon design. We're we're down here on the planet. Um, they're when they're running up to the cabin before our our new bad guy shows up. May o Osha says, uh, "Is talking to Soul," and he says. When we get when we get her captured, I'll explain everything on the ship. You know, at one point they have this conversation, so it really makes you go, "What did you do?" Yeah, because now you're like, "Yeah, something happened, and it was really, really bad, um, bad, bad enough to the point that it's it took these four people and That's spread them saying. to the." You know, my so, theory about you know yeah. he just tried to go in and save save who he could. They were like you know he that's the only uh, going against protocol he had. I'm I'm willing to bet he, he yeah. the savior role is coming. I can I can feel it. And I'm 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 gonna be mad. I'm just telling you, it's gonna make me the whatever, Padawan be mad. <laughs> the Padawan just did what he was told because Carry on Carry on Moss's. Uh, Told because she was just like, well, you know, you listen to me, so it doesn't matter what you say, you know, like I'm the Jedi, so you know, and I'm pretty sure she was more than likely the one overseeing that mission for that particular time. Um, and then who else was there? And then the Wookiee was just worried about fixing things yeah. on the ship or the speeder bike or whatever, because I mean, like, we don't understand what they were saying, which we know that whatever happened happened was bad, and then so now. They're saying, come out. We know you're in there. And whoever's in there, the bad guy shows up. And what I did like is he gets right in Osha's face and he lights the lightsaber. And uh, um, Soul is just like, and then all the Jedi light their lightsabers. I'm like, okay, here's the battle. And all he does with, with Osha is just, he says, and she goes flying off, and the Jedi are running towards this person, and he does some kind of Jedi or or force push and just knocks them all down. Yeah, in sync. Yeah, and I'm like, what? And that's what I. That, you know, that's why it's got to be the the witches of Dagger. Uh, Dagger. Uh, Dathomir. 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 Um, 
It's got to be. It's got to be. That that was my assumption. That that was definitely they made a my deal. Assumption. They made a deal with someone else who's probably has Sith ties, and that's probably where the red lightsaber comes from. Well, and you know what? Okay, yeah. That's... But how are you going to send me on a mission to kill? a Jedi without a, a weapon and you're over here wielding this thing you know, right. showing it off every chance you get um, but yeah the uh, the reveal of that whoever the bad guy is or enemy the main the boss character um, yeah that reveal the silent reveal in the background was really good I always love a good uh, depth of field uh, you know sneaking up on a you know it, it kind of had a scary movie element yes it. yes that, it was, did. that was really cool but um, I guess the thing that kind of gets me is, I mean, I guess they were had to be really good at hiding themselves in the forest because that many Jedi and nobody nobody felt anything until it was too late. I bet it's that crazy. they were already there and they heard uh, May's conversation conversation with the uh, sidekick guy, uh, and so I, it was kind of yeah. like. Oh well, yeah, if that's he, how it's going to be, then I'll just act now and go kill the Wookiee now. Right, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, so that just kind of proves the theory that that I mean, I, I look at that that Keimer is kind of like, okay, you know how witches kind of have a familiar like that, that's how a witch has a cat or. Or, you know, like Harry Potter, you know, each one, they had an owl or something. That's kind of how I feel that what Keimer is. He's like the familiar to this master, whoever it is. Um, and so, yeah. So, yeah, he's, I, I don't know. I, Maybe he tried to like steal from the, I don't know. Whoever this master it's, person is, and you know, and he made him into a like a servant kind of guy. Well, and that's kind of, I wish I kind of wish they would have made uh, May push further into that story, you know, like you dig a little bit deeper. But I mean, I guess that's that wasn't the main goal. Well, of they this. can always use flashbacks as, yeah. as a cop out, they don't have to, you know, necessarily flesh it out. I mean, even though they have to some extent, as a full episode. And that does work sometimes. Other times I get a little sidetracked with that. But, you know, I'm well, expecting flashbacks. Well, yeah, well, I'm okay with that. Ironically, this is the shortest episode that they've had so far. It was only 34 minutes. I thought so. I knew it was it because, really well, short. I only wa I, I watched half of it, and then I watched the remaining half today, and um, even when it went off, I was like, that was it. And McKay was like, well, you watched half, but still, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. seems right. It did feel shorter. You, you, yes, it was. And and you feel cheated. You really do. And and then Probably I because tried... they got tired from all that walk-in. They were like, oh, <laughs> man, we need, <laughs> we need to just do a, take well, this stuff tomorrow. I, I, <laughs> it, I always look at this when it airs weekly, you should walk away with it with a sense of, oh, I can't wait to see what happened next, but still feel satisfied with, with you, you, you've been satisfied with the information you've again been given for the week. The last couple of shows have felt like this was made for binge watching. It's just yeah. like, we're not, we're going to release it one at a time now, but once it's all out there, then someone can come in and binge it all. And then, and, and I, I don't like that. I, I, it it should feel, but this comes from someone who comes from an era of all we had when I was younger was just the weekly episode and it had to hit. So you were always there for the next week, you know, right. this, I was trying you know, to explain uh, the concept of Dragon Ball Z to Michaela. Now that was why we would come home and be home by this time every day and they knew to have these shows come out at this specific time like dragon ball would come out at four 
Um, and even though it wasn't once a week and it was Monday through Friday, like missing even one of those days could really throw off whatever it is right, that you right. knew in between. So it's kind of the same thing. It's just they, 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 and well, Dragon Ball has a lot of fluff. And so you have to do it every day, you know, but if it had been written differently, you could probably get away with once a week, but yeah, you're right. I do agree with you that this is one of the few shows that have had the weekly hosting and it's been definitely better a lot of, and and perhaps some this is one of the shows where i don't think they've pushed the limit too far on what people consider controversial enough to say okay we're just gonna just do the whole season in one shot but there have been plenty of other shows where they most definitely have done that because they know full well like yeah people aren't gonna like this very much so we'll just see what kind of residual views we can get and then hopefully you know we'll make some of our money back and i mean they they usually i, I don't want to say usually but I, I would like to think that they do i mean it's well possible. i i want i would like to see it be successful all the star wars stories to be successful in the rewatching, I mean, the, it, you should want to go back and watch it again, watch it again. As much as I liked Ahsoka, I've not watched it again. As much as I liked Obi Wan, I've not watched it again. I watched it. I think I've I've only I watched it when it first aired, and then bits and pieces of it. So I'm I would watch too. <laughs> I'd watch you know? certain episodes of Ahsoka just for um, reference. Right. If I were to do like a uh, if they, I'm pretty sure they have already come out with a kit. But if they didn't, I would definitely come up with my own uh, kit for the Star Destroyer. I think that'd be really cool. Even at half, like the like the model you had, even half scale would still be pretty cool. Right. Pretty cool looking. Well, I guess since we're at the episode, <laughs> at the end of the episode. Yeah. Any final thoughts? I mean, um, I have no. Like I said before, I am aware of the controversial side, but I watch for the story, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I'm hoping that as far as the episodes as they go along, you know, it should hopefully balance out. And I'm thinking that this show will be no different. Um, I'm really surprised about May's sudden transition at episode four right episode four to um decide oh i'm gonna be on the good side now yeah. because i just suddenly think that that's the right thing to do and um and <laughs> yeah, it's that funny like just, and it's so cliche how that goes off too like oh as soon as no quicker than she said that then oh your master's already on the planet and he killed the you know so there was never any chance of escape it was just a thought which i'm pretty sure her um her her sidekick guy yeah, kind of kind of snitched yeah and yeah. more than likely uh he called in and had i mean because i mean they have hybrid drive so they don't have to, right, you know, it doesn't yeah. take to take very long but yeah i'm pretty sure the the master swooped in and um and and had you know and did the job but i don't know i'd have to look up something on behalf of their culture on maybe it's a canon thing with the whole them not uh with this whole uh, killing a jedi without the weapon like this had there's something personal about that yeah i i and i don't know what it is this is the first time i've heard any of this is all new right so when we get to the end of at least this season um I don't track the controversy or whatever. I'd like to have a conversation about just that, where you can just tell me what the controversies are, and then I can kind of react to those. Because, like I said, I really narrow my vision to where all I'm really I I I, I don't look it's up anything. Safer. That would yeah. be that would be a looser um, video. Like that would be a lot more lax because. That's why I try to avoid it as much as I can, which has actually been good because talking about it in this format, we can just stick to, okay, what is just going on with the story? Does this right. feel like a Star Wars story or does this feel like some kind of... And and that's what makes it hard to dance around that 
but yeah, yeah, that, that would not be hard to sit back and explain. Okay, well, this is what was wrong with what okay. people thought was wrong with this episode. You know, not to say that I think anything was wrong with it, but you know, it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna call it there. So, if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them in the. Uh, leave your comments in in the down. You know, you know where to do that. <laughs> And for the Mediocre Modeler and Andre, this has been another episode of Media More, The Acolyte. We'll see you next time. Pew, 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 pew.